Now that the 2023 elections have ended in the fiasco we warned about, what next? As we consider what we can begin to do, what options are still available to salvation, let us bear in mind that there is a caliphate conquest agenda. There is also the alliance that caliphate built with the rest of the country, particularly the, uh, the renegades, the renegade wing of the southwest. And when I say caliphate, when I say alliance of 1967, I'm talking about the, 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 the conservative north working with the renegade wing of the southwest. We knew what it was in the 60s. We knew what it became in the 70s, early 70s, up to a point. Then, Obasanjo was promoted to the rank of a head slave to help them impose the victory charter from that war by which they seized everybody's assets, pretending they were targeting Eastern Nigeria. That alliance of 1967 has been defeated and decapitated by the Nininas Alliance that isolates the invader, that isolates the monster that has been eating up everybody. Because it's that monster that is killing in Benue, killing in uh, Oyo, killing in Port Harcourt, killing in uh, everywhere across the land. So that monster that has a uh, codified itself into a constitutional format controlling everything in the name of Federal Republic of Nigeria is essentially the one operating that alliance of 1967 that now includes renegade wing of the Southwest of the Yoruba and so, we have had this election. There's a winner declared, Tinubu. But how did we arrive at that? Because we're heading right back to where we were in 1964, that became 1966, with all its uh, condiments complete. Ethnic. Inordinate ambition of a caliphate to prevail. Renegade elements southwest holding hands <laughs> with the enemy. And so we now arrive again at a point in which the other alliance, which had basically been, you know, emasculated and, uh, and incapacitated began to receive some breath of life when Tinobu went over to the Northwest to bring Buhari to be president. He railroaded Buhari, of course, working with uh, some other stakeholders in the dark, including uh, elements in the US, you know about David Axelrod and all of what became <laughs> the APC that became 2015. Having imposed that Buhari on everybody, they wobbled through the first four years we saw the disaster. They wobbled through to 2019 uh, election that became basis of current tenure. We have seen where Nigeria has landed. And for somebody who committed such a heinous crime against his own people and the rest of Nigeria, because he basically opened the gateway for these invaders that are coming from all over Sahel 
from Mauritania, from Libya, every, every, everywhere the Fulani had been wandering, they now have a, a landing uh, space where they are going to dislodge the owners, the indigenous peoples of Nigeria, to share out the land. Like the tiles you have, look at the floor where you are, you see tiles there. That's how they've shared Nigeria all the way to Boni, all the way to Badagri, from Meduguri and Sokoto. And if we recall the role of Afonja in what finally happened to Elori, we begin to see another Afonja here that has opened the gateway. But this time, not just against the Yoruba, against the rest of Nigeria. Then in 20, when, 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 that, when that calamity will have been rolled off, rolled away, Tinubu comes out to say, Emilio Khan. Tinubu was not addressing the rest of Nigeria at the time he said, it is my turn. Because that's the meaning of Emilokan. That's Yoruba for Emilokan. He wasn't talking to the rest of those who thought he was, he was talking generally amongst all political parties and uh, <laughs> political gladiators. No. It was that joint venture, that caliphate alliance of 1967 that includes the renegade wing of Yoruba land. He was telling them, look, uh, I made it possible for you in the last eight years. Uh, you know, you, you, you do, I do. That's how he came to, it is my turn. It is within the context of that alliance. So the rest of you don't get it uh, mixed up. He wasn't talking about you. You have no stake in it. Nigeria belongs to Nigeria. You know, uh, the caliphate realizing that it cannot hold everybody down all by itself engage the renegades. Of course, they now recruit other renegades from the other parts of Nigeria. Otherwise, uh, you won't have people who will stand up in Igbo land or Ejo land or in Benin city to swear to defend and uphold the instrument of their oppression. The constitution imposed by that alliance as victory charter from the war of 1967 to 70. That's how we came about the constitution we have now. It is the victory charter from that war. Those who stood with them at the time, you have been hoodwinked, you have been, you have been, you have been swindled to aid the enemy to take your land. We are all in the same boat now. Our assets and our sovereignty have been hijacked by that uh, caliphate. But whenever things get tough, get uh, some kind of a pushback from the rest of the people, they fall back to, their natural fallback is uh, to the alliance of the seven in which they found a you know, sufficient number of renegades from other parts to join up with them, pretend it's Nigeria that is coming. It is that alliance. But Ninas is the undoing. Ninas is the defeat of that alliance. You've gone to your election. Two things are going to go down. You remember Domino 2? You remember this Domino 2? Two things are already going down. And there's a consequence, which you see in the, in the number three station, the number three pillar. This election has gone down. The constitution that mandated it as imposed by that alliance of 1967 gone down. The union anchored upon that constitution, I tell you, is gone. That unitary Nigeria is gone. They are still the Nigeria, the Nigerian country. Nigerian Federation died. The carcass have been sustained by brigandage. And that's what is the unitary Nigeria defined by this constitution. So those who are planning to come to swear through elections to defend and uphold that unitary Nigeria, that unitary constitution that make the rest of people slaves in their homeland. <coughs> I can only say sorry for you because you are going to you are going to you are going to come face to face with the consequences of your wrongdoing. You are you are you are you are you are, you are aiding the enemy in a war against your people by sustaining that constitution, going to election under it because you are going to swear to defend and uphold it to govern by it. All of those who are uh, rejoicing that their relations have won election, their party people have won election on the 29th of May. Those people 
are going to be swearing to defend and uphold your enslavement. Of course, they're going to get plenty of uh, uh, benefits and profits. If there is uh, some handover, some kind of uh, transition that uh, gets into, they, I'm just, in, we just in, we, Nina's just informing you that uh, you are reinforcing that alliance of 1967 that swallowed the Federation of Nigeria and is now swallowing the peoples trapped here for extermination so that Fulani will share the, the, the owners of that, uh, of that alliance. Because it belongs to some people. That's why they are, they, that's why they are going to have, the, they, they control all the institutions that will decide what will happen with this election. It doesn't matter how, how much you shout. They are waiting for you in court as you come. They've declared what they've declared, short of constitutional, you know, uh, uh, requirements. So, they did it the way they wanted to do it. And they know where they're going with it. And so, let us, let us, let us bear it in mind that that alliance of 1967 is what is playing. It may have a Yoruba mask in the name of uh, uh, Tinobu standing in front now. But the instrument that empowers it is controlled almost exclusively by the heads of that alliance, the owners of that alliance. If we fail, if we fail to wake up from this hypnotism, from this slumber, and join in what the indigenous nationalities are doing under the aegis of NINAS, Nigerian Indigenous Nationalities Alliance for Self-Determination, to topple that constitution, up, upturn the instruments of that monster operating as that alliance through the constitution that tie up the rest of us. We're going to pay not only in assets, we're going to pay in blood. I think we can drop it there.